G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with the last test season one manufacturers cup race uh, that happened in GT7 uh, a couple of days ago or probably be about a week ago by the time you're watching this. We're at Laguna Seca today, we've done two rounds before, we've done the group fours at Bathurst and the group threes at Suzuka. The first round I had to miss but it was also a group three race so um, we find ourselves here for the Group 4 race at Laguna Seca today. Uh, we're in top split, unfortunately, which means we are pretty much going to be fighting down the back. That's normally about what happens. But yes, there were two Group 3 races and two Group 4 races. The best three of the four rounds counted, so we missed the first round. So obviously, the other three rounds are going to be the ones that count for us. So we've jumped in in our lovely G70 Group 4 Genesis. Okay, out for qualifying. Now, we get held in the pits ages here. We got out first I think in one of the uh, one of the nation's cup races but for this particular one I assume probably everyone in this top split here because they're highly skilled drivers probably have all gone to the expense and uh, effort of finding a PlayStation 5 which means that our advantage of actually having the PlayStation 5 to get out of the pits first is uh, rendered non-existent because everyone else also has the same advantage oh there was someone off the track there I think that was Andrew who's uh, made a mistake out of the pits, but that's okay. It's still the outlap here. We find ourselves sort of, you know, I don't really like being in the slipstream train, but we are in kind of a little bit of a slipstream train here. Uh, the, the main peloton, we're at the back of it, if you will. Um, but we start on purpose a little bit further off the back of Meta 7 gear because this is why I've caught up to him throughout the lap, but I haven't caught up right to the back of him to the point where he's actually held me up. I just... Had a, had a feeling I was like oh, I might catch up so I'll give him a bit of space he's it looks like he's got the legs in a straight line actually as he's completely driving away there he's definitely gapping us down the straight so that McLaren 650s group 4 car might be a little bit better but let's see if we can head through this lap here we are a little bit close to meta 7 and given the pace differential on the first lap there I'm slightly concerned at this point that by the end of the lap I might actually catch up to the back of the McLaren um, but we'll see if it does translate to a negative impact if that sentence even makes sense. We're slightly up at that first sector split. Meta 7's gone off the track there, so we don't have to worry about getting held up by the McLaren anymore. He's just given us a little slipstream benefit through the opening sector. We've got to make sure we're nice and tidy through the re remainder of the corners on the lap. This is perhaps the hardest corner to get right on the circuit. The fast flying turn 6, braking just before the 2. No trail braking and basically commit back to the throttle almost straight away to carry the most amount of speed through that corner as possible. The track also compresses so you can carry a lot more speed than it allows but it does mean if you run slightly wide you're carrying way too much speed to be able to get it as uh, to be able to keep it on the track because you don't get that compression to help the car turn but we're half a second up at that sector split there we get a nice line through turn nine make sure we don't go too wide here we're slightly wide maybe half or a quarter of a car width too wide uh, wider than I would have liked at least and then breaking on the number three board get it rotated for the final turn you can commit to the throttle in this car look at that the car just got a beautiful little bit of rotation there the four-wheel drive nature of the G70 really helps the car stick on the exit of corners and that's a 128.6 it's not a bad lap fastest lap is a 127.8 so a little bit faster it's now improved to a 27.7 but unfortunately for us we haven't been able to improve on any more laps in that run there was definitely still time in that lap but I was not able to piece the lap together once again and we currently uh, sit provisionally in eighth position nine and a half tenths off the lead Again, there's a question mark over the actual balance of all the cars here, so I don't know how good the G70 is. Maybe the McGann Trophy is OP. I don't know. I know that M4 that Andrew's driving is pretty good, and he's managed to kind of do it justice by putting it on the front row there uh, in second position behind the McGann Trophy. But again, it's a question of... Uh, uh, it's a question of whether he can keep it there uh, for the duration of the race or whether he actually overtakes that McGann Trophy. will be interesting to see which car is better in the race. But as for us, we managed to stick down in 8th position and we start in possibly the worst place to start, which is on the apex of the last corner. Uh, but I don't really have that high of a risk of spinning out uh, just because of this car's really, really sticky four-wheel drive drivetrain. Uh, so that's not too bad there. And it just means we have a nice air gap either side of us. One point seven seconds ahead to GNK and 1.2 seconds behind to Carafune. Carafune's driving the Mercedes SLS. I, I don't think that's a very good car at all. I think that's kind of on the lower end of the balance of performance scale. Obviously needing quite a large adjustment there because all of these cars you're seeing before your eyes should be able to lap a track 
pretty much at the same time or in the in the same amount of time rather you know the same lap time obviously but okay um this combination at Laguna Seca again once again part of the test season where we have a race almost daily so it was quite oh there's a BMW M4 thankfully it's not Andrew uh, but it's Kayumaru I think they started sort of in the top five I think and they've unfortunately binned it on the exit of turn five and they end up in the gravel trap before turn six so we've gone up a position one up into seventh the gap to GNK is extended to 2.4 seconds so I think they're obviously quite a little bit quicker than me and that uh, probably makes sense because they qualified ahead of me I felt as though my qualifying lap was actually pretty good for what I could do so I'm sort of probably sitting exactly where I should be and probably sitting a little bit higher than I should be to be honest because this is top split and in the manufacturer series um, the ocean Oceanians are mixed in with the Asians, so we have quite a lot more players and the level of skill in the Asia region is quite high so the top split is actually a very very competitive top split here um, but yeah as I was gonna say uh, the test season race is one every day it's really limiting in terms of how much time I can allocate to practicing getting up to speed so I felt as though given the time that I was allowed to actually get up to the pace or get up to the pace that I found here I was actually quite happy with how consistently well not even consistently I don't think I was that happy with my consistency um, but I think I was more so happy with the amount of speed I could extract from the car um, around especially in the qualifying trim I was quite happy with my 28.6 there so we're definitely going to be taking Making this and grabbing it with both hands pretty much in a top split race you're looking to for a top 10 someone like me in top split if you're getting in the top 10 you're doing quite well so the fact that we're able to lap in seventh still about a second ahead of Carafune so he's not heckling us just yet and this lap is actually looking to be a pretty good lap as well so that gap to Carafune should remain about the same unless we make a huge error but I think there's a sector split coming up on the entry to turn nine actually it's not turn nine is it it's turn 10 technically rainy curve which is here so there's that sector split eight tenths up there so that's a 30.1 uh, lap in the race obviously fuel wear tire wear are on one times each the fuel or, or the tire wear hang on the tire wear might be on four times this this time I don't know I think I'm talking rubbish but the fuel and tire wear is on you can notice some of the front tire wear in this car towards the end of the race of which we're doing seven laps um, but the uh, the fuel use especially adds a whole tank of fuel a whole tank of fuels worth of weight in the back of the car so it makes the car a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit more difficult to slow down and turn for these corners um, that lap there was a 29.2 that's a fairly decent race pace lap for someone like me you can see Andrew's fastest lap is a full second quicker a 28.2 so yeah we still got to ways to go before we're actually within touching distance of the actual top of the region but uh, in terms of my pace I was quite happy to be able to set a 29 we clatter that curb on the inside send the car up on two wheels V8 supercar style and unfortunately for me all that hard work I've put in in lap three setting that really really quick lap time it's done absolutely nothing for me because I'm going to go ahead and be an absolute idiot and completely undo all of that effort and let Carafune and that Mercedes SLS go straight past me I was looking to try and return the move straight away at turn 6 I have done a move there at that corner before but I wasn't far enough alongside to actually uh, you know give to actually be given racing room so I think instead of risking a crash it was better to back out on that particular occasion and have a go at going for a move at the corkscrew didn't quite come off on that particular stage and then there's SLS sends it in slightly uh, narrow to turn 10 and let's see he gets a nice line through turn 11 that time we've still got the slipstream though oh we've got another car very close behind I've just noticed I think it's a Mazda Atenza so that car's an absolute rocket ship in a straight line so we're definitely gonna have to get a good exit here and we don't oh he's actually got a penalty okay he had a one second penalty there so that's just released a little bit of pressure from behind me because that Mazda Atenza is perhaps the strongest car in group 4 overall maybe a different car is stronger this track because it's definitely a more handling focused track uh, but in terms of straight line prowess that Mazda Atenza is the gold standard at present moment so the fact that he was so close coming out of that final turn would probably have meant he may have overtaken me into turn one which means I probably would have been stuck behind him through all the corners because I can't imagine that Atenza is as good through the 
corners as it is in a straight line. Generally a car is either a straight line car or a handling car, but I guess it's not out of the question for that Mazda to be so OP that it's also OK through all the corners. But as for my race now, I'm just trying to focus on getting this lap right because I feel, I feel kind of robbed of this position here. I mean, it's definitely nobody else's fault but my own. Uh, that's reflected in the lap times I've said. I've done a 28, I've done a 29.2 and followed it up with a 31.8. So I've definitely, uh, you know, dropped off the pace on that fourth lap. But I think what's happened is because I didn't have enough time to practice. I just saw that 29.2 and I was like, oh my goodness, okay, I'm actually pretty quick here. Put too much pressure on myself and I ended up making a complete wreck of lap four. And now I've lost a position because of it. Thankfully, that BMW M4 that crashed at the opening of the race has just meant that I'm back in the position where I started, so it could be a lot worse. I could really be in ninth if that M4 didn't crash, but at this stage, that SLS is just driving a lot better than me. He gets better drive off the corners, and I think that driver of the Mercedes SLS was probably being hampered in terms of pace by the fact that he had a, Mes uh, not a Mercedes, a Genesis G70 so close to his face. But we skip ahead to halfway through the final lap where we've got a couple of air gaps, 2.1 up to the SLS is driven away so clearly they were the faster car and then 1.2 behind to the Mazda Atenza but then coming through here look at that I miss the apex ever so slightly and as I was referring to earlier I, it's but you don't get the compression you can't carry the speed you've got so I switched to the inside here I've now got to defend for my life off two cars at the closing stage of the race up the inside of the corkscrew just fending off that Mazda Atenza I've got another car who's heckling my back bumper as we head through turn 10 keep it narrow keep it wide on the exit give us the inside for the right hander coming up it's a Porsche Cayman make sure we give him room there's slight side to side contact and the Porsche's out on the on the dirt there I feel as though I still gave him space and we get a bump from behind and there's another car sending it up the inside of the Atenza on the exit not quite sure oh, that's actually Tez oh and there's some contact between the two cars behind Tez there but thankfully at the end of that race even though we had the dirty tyres, we were able to actually defend that position for the last sector and able to bring it home in eighth. Tez absolutely licking his lips, uh, picking up that ninth spot there. He's done well. He came from about 12th at the start of the race all the way up to ninth, capitalising on the drama that all, it, that all happened because I decided to drive off the track in the last race. But ultimately, that eighth position there was for 256 points. I probably would have preferred to grab the 271 that was, uh, that was in seventh spot uh, by Carafune, but I think uh, as that race went on, it was clear that Carafune was the quicker driver. The fact that that, I don't think that SLS was very good as I spoke about before, so the fact that he was actually able to gap me just goes to show either I'm was being pretty crap at this combination or my car's also crap, but I, I definitely think um, being 20 seconds off the lead there's, leave, leaves a little bit to be desired. Okay, but we have to look at this replay of me going off at turn six on the final lap. So that was me there, and I have to return to the inside to try and defend the positions here because we're on the last lap here. I've got to defend. I've got dirty tyres here. It's these defences I want to get take a closer look at. So we're going to run through the whole sequence all the way up until the end. So I've defended from that Mazda Atenza and we can see a little bit more from the chase cam angle we've got here. Down the inside with the Porsche Cayman side by side, this slight bit of contact on the exit. He ends up off the track. And you know, I was well aware of sort of what was going on while I was actually, you know, racing. And then there's side by side on the exit. Oh, oh, Tez doesn't leave too much space, does he? Oh, some more side to side contact between the two behind. But we're gonna take a closer look at these contacts because I was very concerned as to whether these defences were actually legitimate. So I'm going to pause it there. That's the first bit of contact. Now, when I was doing the race, I was well aware I had filthy, dirty tyres. And I'm sort of looking there. I'm definitely well ahead at that stage, but... I think there's an argument to be made as to whether I actually managed to get it stopped on the apex. Because if we have a look here, I'm on the brakes, and I think I've just... I've met the apex, but I'm sort of running a little bit wide on the exit, which isn't ideal. And there's a slight bit of contact, but I think the argument can also be made that I definitely had the inside of the corner at the time we turned in. So I'm not sure uh, what we think of this one. And then this one here, I'm definitely on the inside there, and I meet the apex. My problem here 
was the dirty tyres and that's just sent me a little bit wider than perhaps the Porsche was ready for and we're definitely quite a ways past the point where I actually went off the track so maybe the Porsche expect me to have clean tyres by now. I still had the dirty tyres and I'm just running slightly wide on the exit, not quite taking that tight exit that you normally do at that corner, just running a little bit too wide with the assistance of the dirty tyres. We'll have a look one more time from... I'm going to try roof cam this time. Maybe this isn't the best angle, but we can at least have a look. I'm turning in there. I've met the apex, and there's just a slight bit of contact on the exit. I still left him room. So let's have a look again as we're rounding here. The contacts happened at that point. So we're rounding this corner. I'm trying to keep it tight. Dabbing the brakes on the way through. And we're side by side into here. I've definitely got the inside. I've definitely met the apex, and it's just where I've run wide on the exit is when the the contact has taken place and I didn't even run wide in the sense of running wide half off the track it was I've run wide in the sense that I had a car on the outside but like I still left him enough room I had full intentions of giving every single car the appropriate amount of space it was just really difficult to judge with the dirty tyres which he obviously never practiced on so it was definitely a bit difficult here here's the perspective of the Porsche I'm definitely on the apex there and there's room left on the exit I think the Porsche's just turned in a little bit uh, on me there which is easy enough to do from around the outside it's no worries at all and then oh no love lost between the Atenza and the Nissan GTR there and I think the Atenza just got a slight bit of oversteer there so that's the incident there there the moves that's defense at the end I while I was doing it I was kind of satisfied with with the legitimacy of those defenses there because my argument for either case on the Atenza was I had the inside and I think I was far enough to ahead to be able to claim the corner as my own. And then for the Porsche, I left him space on all parts of the corner. It was just there was a slight bit of contact from a difference in the amount of turn we had on the exit. The Porsche was able to turn slightly bit tighter than I could and ended up running into the side of me. I still left room on the exit though. But tell me what you think down in the comments below. I was, like I said, satisfied with the with the moves i knew it was touch and go and i definitely didn't enjoy those bits of contacts we had with the other two cars but i knew it was the end of the race and i had to basically defend for my life given how close we were to the end of the race after i made that mistake these are the standings as well big shout out to meta 7 gear for actually pulling this data from the website and doing his coding on witchcraft i don't know to help get these into a readable format because they weren't available on the website. Uh, CRV is taking out the top spot with 1,135 points, closely followed by Distinct Andrew. That's Amazing Hour with 1,123. I'd also like to shout out Goat as well for taking a P9 with 963 points. The P9 in Asia plus Oceania, which is the regions we were running for this manufacturer's season, is a really, really impressive job, so well done, mate. As for myself, I've managed to finish up in 33rd there, so I got 783 points, and unfortunately for me, which I'm quite disappointed about, Conzio managed to actually beat me in the number of points, so that was my genesis rival there. My excuse is I wasn't able to practice as much as I ordinarily would have, but I got 783, Conzio got 810. It was obviously quite close between us, and I'm quite disappointed to actually lose against the other Genesis driver, but Conzio's done really well there. Uh, if I can look back and kind of sort of pick anywhere where I wanted to improve, I definitely could have gone a bit better at Bathurst, bringing only 250 points to show from that round. I would have liked 270 at least perhaps from there and then Laguna Seca I definitely could have just not lost the position to the SLS and brought home a points improvement there but that's going to wrap up the first manufacturer's test season we've got a brand new one that started already and I'm going to be racing in that once I manage to actually find the time uh, I've obviously been very busy editing all of these videos you've just finished watching but definitely as soon as we can we're going to be jumping into the manufacturers and nations cup test seasons again test season number twos for each of them and we're going to be competing once again and as for this video this is finally going to be the end so do hit the like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me do leave a comment as well as questions comments and constructive criticism as always very much appreciated but that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me so once again i do thank you very much for watching see you later